feel good about our relationship with God and our quote unquote love for the people in this world. The time for games is over. And the word of God, this is where I want you guys to find comfort. The word of God says that God corrects those whom he loves. Which means that God loves every single person in this building, including myself. I do it too. This word is for me. As much as it is, is for you. We need to start getting back to where we thank our father for the whooping. The worst thing that could ever happen to you is that you get away with it. He loves you. And because he loves you, he's sending his spirit to purify you. And it's going to hurt. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to shake you. Some of your theology is going to have to go in the trash. Some of your false senses of security. That glass is going to have to be shattered. This mirror, the word of God, is the mirror that reminds us of our ugliness sometimes. And praise God for that. Don't be like the fool who just breaks the mirror because he doesn't like what he sees. Fix the problem. If you are born again, the Holy Spirit dwells within you. The power of Christ, the Spirit of God is in you. Yes, you can change. Yes, you can love your neighbor. You can love your brother. You can forget about the things of this world and the idolatry of this world. And you can fall sincerely before the Lord with a heart of repentance and cry out to God for a new heart. Why would you not? You are nothing without him. Your life is worthless unless it is in his service. God is going to use you no matter what you choose. God uses the devil. So God is going to use you. You are going to accomplish his will. The question is, is are you going to reap the benefit at the end of the day? Or are you going to be the one that says, Lord, Lord, and he says, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. It's not enough. We got us. It's not enough that we just show up. So I used to be a gangbanger. And you can't just be from the hood. You got to put in work. And if you don't put in work, you get put off. This ain't no different. Don't think for a second that you're doing anybody a favor just showing up. Participate. And the question we have to, the question I used to have to, I, I constantly have to ask myself when certain things are hard for me to, why do I not want this? It's a very, very.
very bold statement to say, I love God. To say you love anything. Do you know what love is? Do you know what love will cause you to do? I'll tell you what love for God will cause you to do. Recently, there was a woman, I believe, in India. And her husband was a pastor of a church. And they're in a persecuted part of this nation. And some soldiers came into their church. And they had to hide all the scriptures that they used to pass out. And when these soldiers came in, they found the scriptures. They found some of them. And they grabbed the pastor. They tied him up. They sat him in the middle of the sanctuary. And they told him, basically, if you don't tell us where the rest of the, of the scriptures are, we're going to kill you. And his wife was with him. They began to pour gasoline on the pastor and the wife started screaming and telling him just tell them where they're at they're going to kill you this is what love for God God will have you do this pastor looked at his wife covered in gasoline about to be murdered and said woman if you love me more than you love our father, you are not fit for work of the kingdom. I'm not telling them nothing. And she got so convicted in that moment that she told them to do whatever it is that they need to do. They're not going to tell them anything. And they burned her husband to death in front of her. And she not being dragged or forced, got down on her knees next to her burning husband and took the same punishment for the sake of the gospel. That's what love for God will cause you to do. And there's something that has always stirred me is that one day you and I are going to stand before God next to these people. And we're going to say, Lord, I love you. And they're going to say, Lord, I love you. And he's going to look at your life. And he's going to look at their life. And he's going to look at what you would or wouldn't give up. And he's going to look at everything they did give up. And he's going to say, one of y'all is lying. And it ain't them. I'm not saying that's what God has called you for. We all got to die in some way, shape, or fashion. It's not that Christ did it and now we don't have to go through it. That's not what this is about. The word of God says that we are blessed to share in the persecution. That we're blessed to share in the suffering. We are called to suffer. That's, this is what the Bible says. So why do we dodge and avoid the very same thing that we are called for? You have been set free to endure it. Look at the apostles before they had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Cowards. Straight cowards. Hypocrites. Liars. They couldn't pray for an hour. No faith. Fighting over who's going to be the greatest. Seeking their platform. Wanting to be the man in the kingdom. Now, 
we think that's funny. How would you possibly try to be a celebrity next to Christ? But we do it all the time. And how we walk, how we talk, how we dress, how we look at other people. The so-called ministries that we pursue. Most of you are not pursuing ministry merely because you ain't figured out how to find one that will put you on a platform yet. And that is a shame. The best part of my month was what we did today, man. Walking down the street and talking to people, hugging them and praying for them. Reminding myself what this is really all about. One of my young homies, you know, he used to, well, he does, he, he raps. And um, after we did his album, you know, I didn't hear from him for like months. And in my ministry, that's a no-no. You get kicked out for that. You got to check in. You got to be held accountable. We must fellowship. We take the word of God very serious when it comes to stuff like that. Because what you're not going to do is leave, pick up God knows what, and then come back whenever you want and bring whatever you have picked up back into the fellowship with you. As shepherds, we have to protect the flock. So we're very strict about stuff like that. And it works. It holds people accountable. And a lot of the guys are growing. And this dude was a leader. So it was definitely wrong for, for what he did. But, you know, at, the Lord kept telling me to, you know, give him grace, give him grace. So I'm like, all right, for sure. So, you know, about three months go by. I ain't heard from him. So I ended up hitting him up and he's like, bro, I just been real discouraged. And I'm like, why? He was like, man, the album didn't do what I thought it was going to do. And I'm like, so what'd you do it for? See, the problem is your expectation was wrong. Your priority was wrong from the beginning. Your idea of success is this world's idea of success. So when the money didn't come, you felt like a failure. When the crowds weren't screaming your name and showing up by the thousands to come watch you perform, you felt like a failure. But I know of two or three people personally that were blessed by my brother's album. He knows Quite a few people were sending him emails, but it wasn't enough for him. And not only did he stop rapping, he, like I said, he totally walked away from the ministry in general. What, what are we in this for? And he said something to me. He said, when I asked him, you know, why are you doing this? You know, it's the cle we we so we got these pre-recorded messages in our mind, and we answer questions with these things a lot. Man. Oh, I, man, you know me. I just want to preach the gospel. You're a liar. He's like, what do you mean? How am I a liar? I said, if you just want to preach, if that's all you care about, if you just want to preach the gospel, there's a liquor store across the street, you know what I mean? You could stand out there and preach the gospel all day and fulfill your dream. If that's all you want to do. But keep it real, that's not all you want to do. You want glory. You want fame. And until you figure out how to get a piece of this fame, you ain't finna do nothing for God. And keep it real, even when you do do it, it still ain't going to be for God. You're just going to be wearing a Christian t-shirt while you're walking in sin. We got to start examining our hearts. Why aren't we out there? Why? 
It's a commandment. It's not a suggestion. It's not a request. You must know something about a king. A king don't ask you to do nothing. A king tells you what he wants done. And is Christ not the king of kings? And Lord of lords? The word of God says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he is Lord. Lord. Sovereign ruler. He owns you. You are the work that Christ did on the cross. You must understand that the word redeemed means to buy back. It literally means to purchase. So what is something when you purchase it? It's your property. If I purchase something, it now belongs to me. And I have the right to do whatever I want to do with it. I own it. It is mine. For those of you in here who are born again, you have been bought. You have been bought with a price that you could not ever pay. And it is an honor for us. It is an honor for us to serve our king in excellence. Because there's something else you must understand. If I buy something, not only do I understand that it's mine, but what do I expect it to do? Work. And if what I buy doesn't work, I'm throwing it away. And I'll find something that does. What I'm telling you is not my opinion. I'm telling you the word of God. Every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut off and cast into the fire. Every tree. You're not an exception to this. You don't have an inside track with God. You don't have your own special personal relationship with God. What's good for the Jew is also good for the Greek. What's good for me is also good for you. It's time we got to stop looking for the entertainment. We got to stop looking to be entertained. How do most of us pick our churches that way? Oh, I don't go any there anymore because I'm not getting fed. You grown, pick your spoon up and feed yourself. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> You fellowship with the body to serve the body. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You got your blessing. It came about that grave. Mm -hmm. Eternal life is your blessing. Yes. That's what that word meant in the Bible. It ain't what they boil and just crap down to these days, man. Get back in your word. If you don't know your word, you do not know God. What was Christ before he was Yeshua, before he was Jesus? He was the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh. What is the Bible? It is the word. If you do not know your word, you cannot know God. And if you don't know God, you cannot love him. If I just 
just met a young lady. And I tell you, man, she's dope. I love her. You'd be like, no, you don't. You don't even know her. You see what I'm saying? This superficial surface relationship, man, 120 people changed the world. The world. Let me tell you why we can't. We this numbers game crap gotta cease. Real talk. This is me personally. I don't know if this is right. This is what I believe. After what I've seen being in this for 13 years, this is what I truly believe. If you're heck of popular, I don't know about you, bro. Because this thing ain't popular. Right. It's true. It's true. If everyone's feeling you. I don't know. Because ain't nobody going to do Christianity better than Christ and they killed him. Hey, hey, think about it. And Pete Gang, what's the one thing you never, ever, ever, ever heard Christ do? Ever. Apologize. Because he never had a reason to. He never did anybody wrong. But he offended the world. You see what I'm saying? But this is a man. Who was God. This is a man. Who. Loved. Everyone. Perfectly. Okay, he served everyone perfectly. He healed these people. He healed their family members. He fed them. He cared for them. He hung out with them. He died for them. He rose for them, appeared to over 500 people. Now that's key. I want you to remember that. After Christ rose from the grave, he appeared to over 500 people. And at the end of the day, only 120 people were left. You would think at least 500 people would be left. You just came back from the dead. What more must I do? And I say that to say, we are called to be Christ-like. So don't expect different results than what Christ got. And don't you dare water down your message or your lifestyle to please a world that hates whom you claim to love. You don't have worldly friends, but you can be a friend to worldly people. I will say that again. You don't have worldly friends. Anyone who is not born again cannot be your friend. They hate who you love. But you can be a friend to them. And part of being a friend to them is telling them their condition. These are not good people who just need to change their lives. These are not people who are just struggling, but they got good hearts. These are people who are spiritually dead and a slave to iniquity. Their hearts are deceitfully wicked, desperately sick. And apart from Christ, apart from a move of God, the move of the Holy Spirit, they will never come to God. There's something you need to know about hell. Hell is the absence of the presence of God. No man comes to God unless the Spirit draws him. So, hell is so bad because even if God stood at the gates of hell and opened it, 
You would rather burn for eternity than come to him. You are completely turned over to a reprobate mind. There is no hope without the Spirit of God moving in our lives. Remember that next time you want to take for granted what Christ did for you. Remember that next time the one who saves you from yourself asks you to do something for him, commands you to do something for him. Jump at the opportunity. We should jump. I remember I used to play football and the ones who really wanted to play stood real close to the coach. And it was kind of messed up because we'd almost hope people got hurt. So we right there, as soon as the coach looks, right here, got my hat on, I'm ready. Put me in the game. And I asked myself, am I that way with Christ? Am I that way in the kingdom? Am I as close to my coach as I can be? Do I got my pads on? Do I got my helmet on? Am I ready to play? Am I ready to go? Or am I just trying to ride the bench and get the ring when everybody else does all the work? <laughs>